On the eastern coast of Canada lies the unspoiled beauty of Prince Edward Island. For hundreds of years, the local townsfolk made their living from fishing. On October 1st, 1989, an unlikely group of islanders banded together to try and give something back to the sea. It was a cold, windy Sunday morning in autumn. Fishery officer Florian Bryan was supposed to be on vacation. I received a phone call from a fellow fishery officer, Sheldon Bryan, advising that he had received a report that there was um, apparently what uh, was described to me as whales, or a whale, stranded at or near Cove Head Harbor. Florian immediately went to investigate. I just couldn't believe my eyes when I approached the entrance to the harbor there and I looked out and all I could see was this mass configuration of animals or mammals of some shape or description on the shore. So I walked down to the uh, shoreline as close as I could get to the whales and I realized by counting that there wasn't one. I was positive of five at least and possibly a sixth. Six sperm whales, 40 to 65 feet in length, had become beached on a sandbar just offshore. Stranding expert Patricia Gray explained what would happen if they were not freed quickly. When a whale beaches itself, the weight of its body will press down on its internal organs. And uh, very often you can have, uh, a, you know, hemorrhaging taking place and uh, the lungs can fill up with blood, pools of blood. The other danger is that uh, just the combination of the sun and the wind can make them so hot that they cook to death. Whales can only live a certain period of time exposed and beached on the shore as such. It's hours, it's not days that we're dealing with here. I approached a couple of fishermen, Linus Meisner and Fred Morrison, who both fish from Cove Head Harbor, and I said, uh, the only chance I see of saving them is to uh, secure a rope to their tails and see if we can make an effort to pull them off. Basically, that's the only approach I have open. And he said, well, the first thing we need is boats. If we're gonna try and rescue them, so. I said, that's no problem. I made sandwiches, Fred said, well, we'll have to go out in the boat, uh, no doubt about it. And even at that point, we didn't have a clue what we could do, but I felt they were saying, help, help, do something for us, you know. One of the older fishermen in the harbor, he jumped down in his boat and he threw up a brand new coil of three quarter inch nylon rope. He said, here, use it. It's almost impossible to break it. Local diver John McLeod also said he'd help. He and some other divers took on the difficult job of tying the rope to the whales. Yeah, if you think it's safe, we'll go with it. Yeah. If you feel there's any danger, it's it. We're not gonna, we're not gonna take any chances or risk any lives. I love nature. I do a lot of diving and enjoy what it is in the water. So when you're confronted with one of the largest mammals in the world, we said to ourselves, I'm sure everyone felt the same, is that we have a very important job here to do. Let's give it 100% and see if we can get it done. Everything is okay. We've got the fishermen lined up with their boats and the divers are on their way. And everything's pretty well going in place. The plan was risky, but everyone agreed to it, including Patricia Gray. They had no other alternative to do what they could. Uh, there was, it would be absolutely impossible for them to try and lift the whales or to, to put a harness around them or to use a helicopter or anything like that. I mean, you're, you're looking at something that's 58 tons, you know, and that's a very, very large animal. There was quite a surf running in, and they were stranded on a sandbar. There was probably three to four feet of the whale embedded in the sand, being that the surf had washed it out. So you had to be very careful that you didn't get in between the whale and this hollow that they dug, because it would just roll over and squish it. They were thrashing their tails, and uh, if you ever hit with one of the tails, it would just be like a fly being hit with the fly swatter. You would just be instantly killed. There's no question there. When you would uh, walk away from them, their eyes would actually follow you. And then they'd shut their eyes and they would make a moaning sound. The Coast Guard donated nylon straps for the divers to fasten around the whale's enormous tails that would not cut into their flesh. The helicopter pilot was then going to carry the rope to the boat. And one of you guys is going to hook it up to the cargo hook. I'm going to hover over you. And one of you guys is going to hook me up. And then I'm going to try and take the rope out to the, to the boat. We discussed their plan of approach, which was to go out and walk up on each side of the whale, about eight to 10 feet from the whale, and put the rope behind the tail of the whale, pull it back under, and secure it, whereby they would not come in direct contact with the whale so as to disturb them or make them upset.
there are not many sperm whales left. The population is less and less all the time. So when you were working with those, it was as, as if you were working with the king of the sea. Like if you rescued them, you were probably rescuing one of the most important mammals in the sea. Fearing the noise of the helicopter and its downwash might distress the whales, a man on a jet ski took the other end of the rope out to the fishing boat. The securing of the whales went very well. The divers followed the instructions that were given. They uh, had the straps in place and uh, the uh, boats were in place. Everything was a go. The biggest risk, I think, was to keep the boats out in deep enough water. There was quite a current going east that day. The boats were sliding down shore almost faster than we could keep them keep them up the shore to get a decent pull on them. That was that was the, my biggest worry was we're gonna be aground. The whale started to thrash its tail frantically and we backed out of the way and said, Oh here we go, we're gonna finally get one of these whales back in the water. The rope just came hurling back like an elastic band. It broke that one-inch nylon rope as if it was a piece of string. We made three attempts, and all three attempts failed. There was a lot of comment going around the wharf. Uh, well, you're wasting your time. It's impossible. You know, there's no way you're ever going to get these whales free. But I was determined, and I can tell you the fishermen were more determined, and the divers were equally as determined. And we requested that we be given one more chance to try it. We just looked at one another and said, it's never been done. Well, what's the harm? They're dying. Whatever we try will be something. We, we just can't do nothing. As the day went on, they were being probably dehydrated. They were on their sides. The surf was washing into their blowhole with sand. It, you know, definitely not good for them. The tide was going, and so there was less chance to get these whales up. They located a stronger rope and rushed it to the scene. Everyone agreed to try one more time to pull the whale free. So there's your triple rope, okay? Right on. Take that down. So you come back and you put your bolt and your boat yeah. over here. Yeah. And you got your end free to hook onto two inch hosser. And if that doesn't pull them off. They tied the both boats together, the stern of one to the bow of the other. Uh, they could, would just keep enough pressure, like they would not made lunges with the rope. They would just keep a nice steady pressure. Everything was just shaking aboard the boat. And and he was flipping and flapping around there, and he must have dug a bigger hole. The sudden snap could uh, break the tail, damage the vertebrae of the whale, so it was just a steady, consistent pull with an increase of the throttle as we went along. I'll never forget the time as long as I live. At 6.14, that first big whale floated off the shore. I jumped and shouted, but my shout was nothing as to the 7,000 people that went ashore. We could hear it out in the boat. They're just loud acclaim that, you know, hooray, that was it. The only time I was a little bit worried when we told the first whale off, that I didn't know how he was going to act. He, he could have smashed the boulders up, and, you know, once we got him in the deep water where he, he could work. Okay. He just laid right quiet. We hauled the tail up to the boat, cut the rope off, and then swam away. I think they were smart enough to know that we were trying to help them. The tide was going out, and the job became more difficult. It took longer to tow the larger whales off. We made two or three attempts, like towing them at, a, at different angles. We were trying to rescue the whales, not in any means try to hurt them, for sure. By 9 p.m., they managed to pull the last living whale free. Only one had died before they could rescue it. To our satisfaction, we did get five off. All five were alive when we released them. 
It was just something inside that really hit me emotionally that you wanted to cry with joy, not sadness, but you just wanted to express yourself in it by crying. You felt so good. And when Linus Meisner gave me that high five going by in his boat that night, uh, I don't think I've ever experienced a feeling of that in my life. There was people, I don't know, biologists, I don't know who, said if you hook onto their tails, you're gonna break their backs or... I said, it's the only way to do it. And we've done it and it's proved out. It felt good, you know, we had spent a, a lot of time and were cold and, had, uh, you know, I guess we did risk our lives. At that time, we probably didn't think we actually were, but it was a very fulfilling feeling to see them being pulled out into deeper water. If we hadn't succeeded, I don't know how it would have felt, but uh, what the heck, we did succeed. And that feeling was there, and I still have it, and I'm going to have it until the day they put me down on me. Next. One minute they're there, next minute they're not. I didn't really know what to think. 